How's it going? My name is Mr. Milanese, and today we're talking about box and whisker plots. Okay, so let's start off by just figuring out what is a box and whisker plot. Well, a box and whisker plot is a way to display your data and to show how either how spread out it is or how tightly compacted it is. So if you're wanting, if you have uh, data that's kind of all over the place, a box and whisker plot is a really good way to represent where your information is at. So let's take a look at our data. Uh, let's just say that we surveyed nine high school seniors and we asked them uh, how many breakups they have had throughout their four years of high school. And let's pretend like these are the results. Um, so the first person had four breakups, the next person had six breakups, the next person had one breakup, no breakups, and so on. This person has had a rough life, I guess. Anyway, uh, so here's how we make a box and whisker plot. The first step is to rearrange the numbers in numerical order, in other words, from smallest to biggest. So let's do that right now. Okay, so now that we have the numbers in order from smallest to biggest, uh, the next step is to find out your five important values. Um, these are the five important values, and let's talk about what each one of these is and how you can find it. Um, so the minimum is, not surprisingly, the smallest number that you have here. Now that they're in order, you can readily see that that is a zero. So our minimum for this data set is a zero. And again, that represents zero breakups. The maximum is all the way over here at 11. Uh, so that's the highest number that we have. Um, the median is, if you remember, the median is the middle number of a data set once it's in order, okay? So now that we have the numbers in order, let's uh, count to the middle and see which number is in order. And I always just put my hands on both sides and literally just count to the middle. So we're at zero and 11, zero and six, one and four, two and four, here is our middle number. So our middle number, or our median, is gonna be four. Now, what about quartile one and quartile three? What does this mean? Well, uh, if we exclude the median, so for this next part, we're not gonna count the median, and we just look at the first part of the data, quartile one is the middle, or the median, of the first half of your data. So in other words, remember I'm excluding the median when I'm looking for quartile one. So I'm excluding this four and I'm just gonna look at these numbers. And what I wanna do is find the middle number uh, from the first half of the data and that'll be quartile one. So we'll do the same technique, a zero and a two, zero and a one, but we have a problem. There is no number right here in the middle, okay? So we don't have a middle number. Uh, so what do we do in that case? Well, let's just average the two closest ones. So we've got zero and one, and the average of that, if you take zero plus one divided by two, it's 0.5, or half, one half. So our quartile one is 0.5, because that's the number that is equidistant in the middle of these two, okay? Similarly, on the second half of data, we can find our quartile three. So again, ignoring the median, let's look at the second half of data, and find the middle number from the second half of data. And the way we're gonna do that is we'll count to the middle, and once again, it looks like four and six are kinda tied for the middle. So what do we do? We average them, and you can do this in your head. The number immediately in between four and six is, of course, five. So five is the average of those two numbers, and now we have the five important numbers that make a box and whisker plot. Now, if you're looking at this, and you see quartile one and quartile three, and you're wondering what happened to quartile two, well, sometimes the median is referred to as quartile two. Uh, similarly, the minimum and the maximum sometimes are called the lower extreme and the upper extreme. It's different ways to say the same thing. Okay, now we're ready to make the box and whisker plot. Uh, as you can see, I've already got a number line here, and all I'm gonna do is make a dot above the number line in each one of these positions. So let's do that first. We're gonna have a dot, uh, it, again, this is floating above the line at zero. I need one at 0 0.5, so we're gonna have to estimate that would be right around in here. I need one at four, which is right here. I need one at five, should be right here. And then I need one all the way at 11. Okay, so now that we've got our numbers floating, it's time to actually draw the box and whiskers, okay? 
So the box is just gonna be a rectangle that we're going to draw that goes through uh, the middle three points. In other words, the quartile one, median, and quartile three. Just watch and this will make makes more sense. Um, so here's what this looks like. I'm literally drawing a rectangle through those numbers and I'm gonna draw a vertical line straight through the median. If you've never done one of these before, this probably looks ridiculous, right? Uh, you'll see where this is going here in a second. So we drew a rectangle through essentially the second number, third number, and fourth number. That's the box part of this. The whiskers, sort of a dumb reason that we call it the whiskers, but they peel out to the edges from quartile one to the minimum. So this is a very short whisker. And then from quartile three to your maximum, which this of course is a longer whisker. Okay, so it's sort of a corny name for it, but this is the box and then this is the whiskers. Okay, that's how you make a box and whisker plot, but it's important to understand why you would use this. Okay, so so often we make box and whisker plots in a math class and have no idea why we're doing it. Well, here's what it shows you. It shows you how spread out your data is or if there's a concentration of data in a certain part. Uh, in each one of these brackets, that contains one-fourth or a quarter, that's why they're called quartiles, of our data. So for instance, did you notice how small that whisker was, how tightly compacted? That means the lower one-fourth of our data is very close together. And if you look at it, you can see that these numbers are very, very close together on the lower end. Uh, conversely, the opposite of that, if you look at the upper end of our data, see how spread out it is. So that shows you that we have kind of wildly different results um, up here on the upper end. So you can see, you know, going from four to six to 11, there's a bigger jump than there is at the bottom. Well, why is that useful? Uh, it depends, of course, on what your data represents. In this case, if it's talking about breakups, well, you're just talking about, well, there's a higher concentration of students that don't have a lot of breakups. Uh, and then there's kind of wildly different results on the upper end. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we make a box and whisker plot.